His question is ticket to victory. Well, we've seen Walker before on show blocks. Look at him again here. He lives in Houston, Texas, and he is riding high, really feeling confident and happy to be on television again. Started boxing at 21, had limited am amateur, amateur experience. So he's only a two-year pro. And last November on Showbox, he got his shot at a breakout against then unbeaten Jason Estrada, who's beaten him three times in the amateurs. And Bob would do it again that night. Walker started cautiously, fell behind early, ramped up the pressure, though. He got to Estrada, jarred him, tried to force a knockout. Walker clearly dominated the second half of the fight, won a majority eight round decision. He's vowed to work more off his jab tonight and set up that power against Garcia. 27-year-old Travis Walker, 22-0, one draw, 17 KOs. Take us behind the numbers, Steve. Uh, Walker's been waiting it out. He weighed 235 for the Estrada fight, Nick, the lightest of his career. He was strong down the stretch in that fight, so it seems to be a good number. Tonight, 235 again. No turning back. Consecutive fights against undefeated heavyweights tells you that Walker's ready to start making his move and head games. If he wins tonight, Walker will have wins against two fighters who beat him in the amateurs. That'll provide something, Nick, that's invaluable for a young heavyweight, and that's confidence. Well, George Garcia has a win over him. We look at him. He came from California to Phoenix and took up boxing as a teenager. He had 150 amateur fights, won the silver medal at the U.S. Nationals three straight years in the 201-pound division. That was many pounds ago, as we see. He then went to the 2004 Olympic trials and beat Walker. Garcia, though, has a a lot of respect for Walker's improvement as a pro and expects a tough fight tonight. He's the shorter guy and says, while he likes to come forward, he's not stupid. He'll take what's available against his towering opponent. George Garcia is 24 years old. He's 13 and 0, four knockouts. What's behind the numbers, Steve? Well, Garcia is green on green. Man. Garcia's faced only one fighter who had double digits and wins. He had more amateur experience than Walker, but he's been moved slower as a pro. Feather leather. Garcia's eight most recent wins all came by decision. Those eight opponents had previously been stopped a combined 19 times. And slow start. Garcia and Walker turned pro on the same card back in 2004. But Garcia's had 13 fights to Walker's 23. So Garcia is playing catch up. And that's a setup story for our main event here in Minneapolis. Travis Walker beats George Garcia in a face-off between undefeated American heavyweights. Back to ring announcer Dan Cole. Ladies and gentlemen, we welcome you again to the Target Center here in Minneapolis, Minnesota for Showbox, the new generation, brought to you by Goose and Tudor Promotions in association with Seconds Out Promotions and Showtime. This bout is sanctioned by the IBA and the Minnesota Boxing Commission. The chairman is Mike Munford. The supervisor is Dean Chance. Introducing the judges as appointed, Carl Benson, John Mariano, and Denny Nelson. Our referee is Gino Rodriguez. Our ringside position is Dr. Sheldon Siegel. This is the Showbox main event of the evening, 10 rounds of boxing for the IBA Continental America's heavyweight title. Presenting first, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing blue trunks with silver trim. He weighed in at 250 pounds. He enters the ring with a perfect record. 13 wins, no losses, four of those wins by knockouts. Please welcome from Phoenix, Arizona, George El Carrizo Garcia. And by the outside corner, he's wearing black trunks with silver trim. He weighed in at a rock solid 235 pounds. He also enters the ring with an unblemished record. 22 wins, no losses, one draw. 17 of those wins coming by way of the electrifying knockout from Houston, Texas. Please welcome Travis Great Train Walker. Thank you, all right? I want you to protect yourself at all times and obey my command at all times. All right, good luck. Shake them up. When you look at the uh, heights and reaches of these two, it's hard to believe they fight in the same division. Walker, 6-inch height advantage and a humongous 14-inch reach advantage. 
He's very confident in this one, and we will see once they hit. They really look like different kinds of fighters. They're both heavyweights, and the same rules apply. Unified rules in effect tonight. Gino Rodriguez, veteran referee, is the third man in as we get ready to go here. Garcia is the short squat guy. He outweighs Butler by fifth, or I shouldn't say, I should say Walker by 15 pounds. Walker promised to deliver the jab, and so far he's doing it. Boy, Garcia has to stay inside. What else can he really do? And he's getting, he won't get driven back here, but he's getting outgunned, it looks like, repeatedly. He wants to push Walker back. Boy, it's a strange sight, isn't it, Steve? It really is, and you know what? Garcia's throwing a lot of big shots, but Walker seems very determined to teach Garcia right away. If you're going to charge forward, you're going to get hit. Well, Walker, he doesn't think it. He gets tangled up, Walker. He doesn't, he doesn't feel like uh, Garcia doesn't feel Walker's really got the, the kind of movement and fluidity to fight backing up. And I agree that's an issue with most fighters. But he's trying to get dialed in now is Walker. He's a little short with that right, but good for him that he's working off the jab. And we must remember about Garcia has been to the Olympic trials. He's got a solid amateur foundation, Steve, so this isn't a guy who doesn't know how to fight and is just looking for, for a wing and a prayer and a, and a knockout. These guys turn pro on the same card, but Walker far busier. Garcia only 54 rounds in virtually uh, almost three full years. So far, what I like about Garcia, he's forcing Walker to fight, and he's difficult to discourage. He got hit coming in twice there. And you see the amateur numbers. Garcia was rated number two in America. He amateurs behind Jason Estrada, who, by the way, fought tonight and won. And was in much better shape tonight fighting and winning than he was when he fought uh, Walker on Showbox a few months ago. Very impressed already how Walker caught Garcia coming in and coming in. But look at Garcia. You'd never think he had to reach to, to reach the jaw of Walker there, but he got into the right zone and landed an overhand right. Tries it again. Walker ties him up. A quick opening couple of minutes here in Minneapolis. Travis Walker on the right. George Garcia is undefeated as well. He says he'll switch up, and he does. And sinks a lead left hand from the southpaw stance to the body of Walker. So Walker runs into another left hand. So Garcia getting his shots in. Walker trying to time Garcia's rush and nail him with an uppercut. You can see why Garcia has so few knockouts, Nick. His shots are all clubbing. His arms are so short. He has no snap on his shots. He has a point. I'm looking for reach. 68 to 82. So Garcia's dilemma, not a lot of power, but he's got to get inside. He can't win from outside. He said he's, he could win rounds that way, but we'll see as we hit the end of the round and talk strategy with both fighters. There you go, yes. He doesn't move backwards very well. He's not a boxer, so, you know, if he has to move backwards, it's going to be my advantage. I'm going to use his right hand to clear him out because I know he's going to try to come in. Every time he tries to come in, I'm going to put it on. And yeah, he'll sit down early. Mike Pratchett, the uh, trainer for Travis Walker, he's been with some dudes in his time as a fighter. He only had two dozen fights, but he took uh, Julio Cesar Chavez 12. Exactly, for the title, when Chavez was a 140-pound champ. Here comes Garcia, not discouraged at all. He plows forward. And now Walker trying to create some space, and now he's really winging shots. Garcia running into them, and he's getting really chopped down that way, I think, Steve Walker. Definitely the heavier hands here. What's interesting is that Garcia's style is forcing Walker to really fight fast and hard. Garcia's on top of him, and Walker doesn't want him on top of him. He wants him in the distance. How about the southpaw stance? 
wonder if it has any effect. He's done that twice and switched up on Walker. Well, the southpaw stance could make Walker's jab a little less effective, but his right hand's his big punch, and the right hand works against southpaw, so I'm not so sure that's a good move by Garcia. Yeah, maybe, you know, you could close distance that way if he would start orthodox and switch on the way in, but he's not doing that. Nice counter shot, so follow-up shot from Garcia lands, the left hook. We've seen the right land before, and there's Walker out of the clinches nicely. Why not keep punching? Big right hand as he chills Garcia. Garcia is squared up, fighting out of southpaw again. Garcia's never been down, so that's a challenge for Walker's big right hand. It really is. Garcia just nailing those shots, just throwing them and now blindly, really, Steve. And I'll tell you, Nick, tell me if I'm wrong, in, in one and a half rounds, wouldn't you say Garcia has landed more clean shots than, than Jason Estrada did in eight rounds? You are absolutely right. Good observation. Which obviously has made for a far more exciting fight. Counter shot from Garcia. He gets hit on the way in, but he keeps punching, and it's those tail end shots that are landing for him. And, and judging by our first fight, Nick, further validation that with heavyweights, obviously anything can happen, so I'm making oh, no wow. conclusive statement. Something did just happen. It looks like when he's rolling over in front of us here, he got hit either with a body shot or low. Well, the referee said que pasa to Garcia. He had no idea what happened. Walker trying to dial in with the jab again. He's had Garcia hurt. Garcia running into shots again. Now he's looking like he's getting discouraged. He's really just letting it, airing it all out, trying to get lucky here at the end of two. It's hard to see their backs when his back was to it, to us. Was it a punch? Was it a low blow? But Garcia back to his corner now. Pinch it low, man. Hit it that low. Hit it that low. Go out there, hit blow, George. Fuck it, man. Actually, from round two, Garcia goes down watching it live. I have no idea why. Oh, that's a clean body shot. You know, Garcia's dad in his corner said, you got hit low. He didn't get hit low. That wasn't even close to low. That's just a beautiful body shot. Watch it again. Left hand to the body. Garcia never down in his career. And that's the punching power of Travis Walker. He's a big guy and he can punch. Take it out. And Steve, the beauty of that for us in terms of Walker's development, when you look at it, he didn't show us a left hook at all against Estrada. Here comes Garcia. He'll try to wade in. He's squared up again, trying to hit Walker on the way out, and now reload and fall back in. So Steve Walker doing a good job, sinking shots to the body, ripping uppercuts. But should he be creating a little more space at times, or is he content to fight inside? Is that a good idea? No, he should be creating space. And you know what? He's getting hit by some big shots. Trouble is, Garcia just can't punch. Garcia could just wear down Walker just by being around and keep throwing big shots. He's down three points now, though, after that 10-8 round in the second. And as you said, with landing a lot of shots prior to being knocked down, Garcia is forcing Walker to fight at a rapid clip. So he's a swarmer. Walker knew it. He just got to throw volume punches. That's his only thing. Look at that. Look at Garcia keeps that high guard. It's an invitation for Walker to land the kind of shot that he scored the knockdown with. Come underneath with a right or a left. Right into that ample gut of Garcia. There he does it. Same punch that produced the knockdown. Boy, Garcia is really awkward. He gets tagged with a right hand there. Full of guts and determination. But again, he's getting out thrown. Right hand plumbing from Walker. He's got a punch down on this guy. 
He's outweighed Walker by 15, uh, 15 pounds, so Garcia's 250. Oh, Walker's chin was dangerously hung out, almost to dry there. This is one guy, there's no excuse for Walker to reach when he punches at him. No, no need to do that. A higher percentage of this round has been fought on the inside than the first two rounds. It's really made for, for exciting action. And look at the clip Garcia's fighting at. He's just, again, forcing, forcing, forcing the issue of the action, and therefore the pace of this fight. Walker unable to really control. Here comes Garcia, hands down, southpaw, hands up now, straight ahead. Walker with some free shots, looking for openings. There's the right hand to the body. The whistle's a right uppercut that misses. Okay, yeah, come back. Walker shouldn't be worried about punching down. He should come up with his shots in uppercut fashion to the body. That was a nice straight right hand, set up a baby left hook. shot from Garcia, that left hook landed, a big left hook from Walker, as Garcia goes staggering back to his corner. Dude, you got your hands out halfway into it. You know your you It's okay, it's okay. Turn it. You put your hands up. Round three, Garcia was having a pretty good comeback round until the May, the last 10 seconds. Look at that left hook. He toppled like the leading tower of Pisa. He did not go down, but he stumbled back to his corner. And as we start round four, we have to keep an eye on Garcia because he was badly hurt there at the end of round three. Oh, that left hook couldn't have been better. And you know what, Nick? You pointed it out before. Walker's done more damage with his left hand in this fight than his vaunted right hand. Good timing, good timing. What do you think it is, Steve? Just in terms of him starting to put punches together? Or why is that the hook is just there? I think everything's there because of Garcia's style. Right in front, of, right in front, and he squared up here again. There's the right hammer from Walker, and then follows with another uppercut, and now flicking the jab out. So Walker trying to do it all against the guy he knows he can. Either time rushes. Even though he's got a fight with a rapid clip, now it's Garcia backing up for one of the few times in this fight. He's exhausted. He's exhausted. He's game as heck, Nick, but you know what? He just doesn't have the guns. Well, again, some guy's got the chin, so we'll see if Walker can make it a short night or if Garcia's going to keep pulling his way and staying in this fight. Garcia tries to slip under, but not countering with anything. Uh, Garcia, you can see how tired and hurt he is by his feet. His toes are actually, when he's coming forward, pointed up, because he's on his heels so much. His balance isn't good now. So Walker's still waiting. He wants to create distance here. Gets blocked to the right hand. A follow-up left missed, it seems, from George Garcia, but the crowd liked it. See, Garcia land shots, they can, you have to draw a little bit of a parallel to the last fight. Butler was in control way ahead, he collapsed. I don't think Travis Walker's going to collapse. We really don't know, do we? <laughs> Garcia, again, full of determination. He is trying to press forward. We saw him go backwards the first time in the fight, just moments ago. He was wobbled badly at the end of the third. We're here in the fourth, scheduled for ten. He's slipping shot, but delayed reaction to try to come back. As he listens to his corner, his father is trainer. Same strategy that I played Kowski in the first fight. They want Garcia to just stay on Walker's chest. And one job, one thing Walker is not doing well is when Garcia throws that left hook, Walker's right hand is low, consistently low. He hasn't blocked one of them. There it is again. You're not going to slip the punch. You better have your gloves up. Walker's not doing that. Steve, Walker could avoid all of this kind of action if he would try to keep Garcia at the end of his jab, time those rushes, and move on a little bit more. 
but he is in the range. Garcia has to win at or has a shot at winning at the only shot. So Walker playing into the only opportunity Garcia has in this fight. That's the way on punches, get inside and stay inside. Walker's mouth open, certainly a sign of fatigue. As he buries a right hand to the body of Garcia at the finish of round four here in Minneapolis. And don't load them up, let's throw some combinations from this. Stay relaxed and throw combinations. Okay? You got this, man. Let's stay relaxed, okay? Action from round four. A good comeback round for George Garcia. So right to the top of the head and sort of a left. Well, it was strong from a southpaw stand, so I call it a left cross. You're going to see it again a second look. Watch Walker's reaction. He kind of fell forward a little bit. I think that's the first time in the fight where he actually felt a little... Get a little stung by Garcia's punches. That was a good punch. You got the jab. You got the jab, baby. It's the working nice for you. Got, you got a nice jab right back to the side. Okay, right to the left side of the face, all right? Well, again, in the progression of Travis Walker, Steve, we've been hearing about this good jab of his and how he vows to use it to make everything else easier. And again, as White Pratchett clearly pointed out, he hasn't been utilizing it. <laughs> As he utilized it, Nick, it's, it's really what's come after the jab that's enabled Walker to uh, control this fight. Or at least be ahead. Now he wants to slug and knock Garcia back as he stands in the middle of the ring and figures that he's got more firepower. So Walker relying on power shots. He's squared up, just waiting for Garcia to come to him. Instead of thinking maybe that little move to the side, running him into a little short hook. Come on, get him. Keep that bad, Once again, Walker's hands are very low. He's lucky he's not in with a big puncher because the shots he's taking, those left hooks, I don't know. If it was a big puncher in there, Walker might not still be in the fight. You're right, and Chief Garcia's got a punch going up. I mean, the angle, he's got to go to hit this guy. So maybe Walker should really fight tall, too, stand tall. When you, when you fight a guy with Garcia's dimensions and style, and you're a guy like Walker, he's either going to make you look really bad or really good. We saw really good from Walker, actually. So now, I think we're getting a little bit less of both. Yeah. Like Garcia just pulling his way forward. There's that right hand. He's really not turning over the shots. But it allows him to prevent Walker from getting into his offense. As you approach the halfway mark, you got to wonder, Steve, the intrigue is, will it go the distance? Garcia's so full of fight, he's been down and clearly hurt by that body shot. Well, I'm with you on that, and uh, as we saw in the first fight, if the heavyweight fight goes long, toward the end, both guys are very often exhausted, and, you know, one shot, boom, the whole fight turns around. Heavyweights beat themselves sometimes. You know, that's what happened to Rafael Butler. And if Walker gets the game to take some of these shots that he's been taking, who knows? That's why he needs to get rid of Garcia now. Well, good follow-up shot there. Garcia stays inside where he has to be. But boy, those roundhouse shots, he is open down the middle. If uh, Walker could streamline those shots, land the uppercuts, crowd loves that Garcia so full of fight. And I do too, it's his only shot. Nah, I like this guy. Oh. <laughs> Come on, T. You gotta drop down, you stand up, you're too tall on him, okay? So get down, get up underneath this, and we gotta hit the body, okay? You're too tall with him, all right? Get down for me, all right? You understand what I'm saying, T? Listen to me, man. You want this, you want this shit, okay? Listen to me, all right? You want this man, you want to take the side home with us? Okay, let's work, man. Get down, bring your knees, man. You ain't tired. You ready to work. Let's go, okay? 
Bend your knees and hit the body, okay? You stand up two straight up in the air, okay? And get your hands right. Action from round five. Garcia's never stopped drawing this left hook. Look at Walker's right glove. He starts to bring it up way too late. His head, his chin exposed. Now we're going to take a look later in the round. Same thing. Walker doesn't have a good defensive posture. His right glove is hanging low. Garcia just keeps throwing that left hook. Keeps landing it, too. Steve, it's an academic point that maybe sets a guy up later, and it doesn't win you any points or rounds, but I wonder who really the stronger guy is. I, I Going in, I thought Walker would use his strength, maybe muscle and rough up Garcia, but, man, Garcia really hangs with him, and he'll muscle him right back inside. He doesn't have to punch, but he's got strength. Well, I agree with you, and you know what? Familiarity is a factor, too, here. Garcia's used to fighting guys much taller than him, where he has to fight this kind of fight. But in Bobbin now, they really are. Walker cracks to the ribs with a left hook. So we've seen the left hook, and he tries to explode with the right over the top. Right, left again. So pure power shots from Walker. Garcia bleeding now. He runs into a right hand. Now Walker can straighten those shots. Garcia just plowing, pushing his way, willing his way forward. Garcia not jabbing at all. So he is open on the way in. He is southpaw now. He took those shots on the gloves. You got two tired heavyweights now. Travis Walker's tired. He's sucking air. His technique is he's going a little bit. He says, you know, with his driving, he said he didn't score a knockout because he went for the knockout. And his technique right now isn't that much better than it was in that fight. See, they got to tell you, he's really hit this guy with some with his best shots, and he hasn't been able to budge him since that second round knockout, knockdown, and then he wobbled uh, Garcia round later, but Garcia is just not the strength. He continues to come forward. And I'm not sure what Dwight Pratchett meant when he told Walker, you're fighting too tall. I mean, yeah. Why wouldn't you want to fight tall? Right, that's what I said, but he wants him, I suppose, leverage to bend and fire that book to really get his legs into the shot. The only thing I could see. Walker is jabbing. He's just not jabbing with any kind of accuracy or any kind of push on the jab. He's not snapping the jab. And that's for the team. Oh, Garcia keeps coming. He's cut under the eye, left eye. Remember, Walker has been 10 rounds. He's also been 8 rounds. But I don't think it was against fighters who were coming forward with the fighting spirit of Garcia. Well, and as you said, behind the numbers, huge step up in class for Garcia. But probably lost every round. He's never quit in this fight. I know, I've given him the last two. Close rounds, but I don't see much offensive effectiveness right now from Walker. Those jabs are his number on this one. Good point, and there's a follow-up, so... Garcia comes from strange angles and then just keeps firing. Come on, come on, come on, come on. These are some of the young heavyweights, like Travis Walker, who are American, young, and undefeated. You're going to see Eddie Chambers on Showbox May 4 against Dominic Wynn. That'll be his biggest fight. Chris Ariola, he's got, he'll be on that card also. He has a nice win against Damian Wills. Malik Scott, 27-0. We're still waiting for him to take the next step. Chad Witherspoon, good boxer, good athlete, not much power. And then Kevin Johnson, a little one-dimensional, great jab, but not much else. These are the fighters. This is the class that Travis Walker's in. He wants to kind of pull away from the rest of the pack. Six, how do you have it? Well, I gotta do my math here, Nick. I have uh, I gave Walker the first three rounds, including a 10-8 in the second. I think this is a pretty close fight. I walk her up two points. Wow, would that be something? Garcia with the rushes he continues to come in, but not punching his way in. So he's walking and eating that jab. And that's really what Walker should be doing more. Feed him the jab, feed him the jab, and then set up that right hand. 
But Garcia all night, Steve, has, success, has been successful in that he's tried to rock, walk a back, push him back anyway. You see Walker establishing distance here, but he has landed a jab. Right. Now, either guy doing anything once they're inside as they tie up. It sends Garcia as he slips under a left hook from Walker, but unable to connect with a collar. Walker trying to move, he's trying to be up on his feet, so he's trying to get the jab in Garcia's face, and Garcia with a right, followed by a left, as he really closes distance quite cleverly, I think. He has to launch himself a little bit, but he'll do a little switch that way. And, and transition pretty well. And, and we're almost at the point now where jabbing is not even a good idea for Walker because when he does jab, he drops his right hand, and that's when Garcia lands his shot. Yeah, that little short right lead from Walker as he time to Garcia seems to have some renewed vigor in him as he's trying to walk Walker down. Garcia's not even trying to slip the jab anymore. He's just looking for an excuse to counter punch. Steve, suddenly I agree with you and reassess what I have going. That's a much closer fight than I had figured. A little left hand from Garcia. He walks into a left himself. A minute to go here in the seven. I don't see, yeah, and they got into a power shot yeah. coming from Walker. The shots that, that hurt Garcia early in the fight. Steve, one thing, uh, again, heavyweights love to bring a lot of time off. Oh, left hand from, uh, from uh, Garcia there, but Garcia just not letting Walker coast. So he's forcing him to fight. He's expending a lot of energy. I just wonder how Garcia didn't look like a guy, obviously, that went a beauty contest or muscle and fitness, but he's still got enough stamina here to be an issue. He's hanging around big time and winning some rounds on your card. And Garcia, 250 tonight, he was 294 when he got the call for this fight. You talk about not being a bad, beautiful, yeah. Nice you know what? The guy's got the guts of a fighter. He does. Oh, nice right hand, and Walker... Backing up, Garcia's right, he can't fight backing yeah. up. So that is, again, the formula here, and it paid off. He's still around, yeah? Yeah, yeah. He didn't tired. Huh? He's getting tired. What time? What round? Come on, man, you gotta put pressure, man. Put pressure. Forget on him. Get on his ass, man. Make sure you left ten, ten seconds. You're working fine. You're getting in with the jab. Get in with the jab. Stay in there. Get inside the movement. You know, go ahead. Keep, keep your hands up. Okay? Enjoy it. I'm sorry, sir. I'm sorry. Get inside, okay? It's there, all right? But you gotta get your hands back where you got them, because they catch you with stupid shit. All right? Your hands right back where you got them, all right? Deep breath. Do some deep breath. Man, this is you, okay? See, you go home with the title, okay? Let's do this, all right? Let's set this shit up, all right? Well, the issue on both sides, get a little more defense, but from Garcia and his father, a trainer, former fighter, keep the offense going. We didn't, we didn't hear it the entire minute from White Pratchett, but I don't know what else Walker can be doing offensively, but we just haven't seen it out of him. Well, Dwight Pratchett's message seemed to be keep your hands up. Right. It's easy to it's say. Defense. But, yeah, but when you're built like Walker, I mean, those arms right now feel like they're about 300 pounds apiece. <laughs> and even if you're trying to keep your arms up, by the two-minute mark of the round, those arms are down. See, Steve, again, I hammer home the same point. Walker, there he showed how effective he was. He's just blinding Garcia with that jab. When he follows up that little right hand over the top, he's very effective. There he follows up with the left of the body. Come on, come on, come on. That's the punch that got Garcia down in round two, that left underneath. Uh, Walker there will be hit after a combination. Garcia barrels in. Hands pretty low. He tries to pick off shots in the gloves coming in. Walker again, not dictating the distance. He catches on a Garcia on the hip. Gino Rodriguez, the referee, didn't catch it. 
Every time Garcia throws a left hook, Walker raises his right glove to block it, but after it's already landed. <laughs> Good finishing up shot from Walker inside, but it doesn't discourage Garcia. And the crowd really loves this man's belt. The little short guy anyway. Good job by Gino Rodriguez, waiting for a lot of reaction. See his corner yelling at him to just pour the pressure on. Instead, he runs into a left hook for the body. Now, Walker warned about the holding. Garcia lunges forward. Not punching his way in. Try to slip shots. They're coming upstairs then. The dip and move in with that left hook at times. There it is again. Nick, I really feel this last minute of this round's important because, oh, right hand to the body. Not low, according to the referee. And Garcia wades back into battle. He's got 20 seconds. Oh, that's on the belt line as well, that left hook from Walker. So that's the punch that has been most effective, but it could have got him in trouble there. So the uh, body shot. Garcia answers with a hook of his own, come on, come on, come on. so he ain't one to give one. Good job, Mio. Good job, man. Good job. We're out of this. Come on, Mio. Let's go. You're beating it down, Joe. You're beating it down. You hear the people? You're beating it down. Let's go, man. Keep Stay on him. Stay on him. He don't want to fight. He's opening his mouth. Hit him with an uppercut. Throw him with a hook. He has his mouth open. Good job, man. Action from round eight. Garcia had the momentum coming into the round. But watch the left hand to the body. That's a legal shot. Oh, yeah. And that's what got Garcia in trouble early in the fight. And that's what got Walker the momentum back in round eight. Now, later in the round, watch the left hand again. That one oh, clearly low. It was a little bit under the G of Garcia on the waistband of Garcia. Boy, that was... Referee ruled it a legal punch, though. Which gave Garcia no time to recover. But his father wants him to pour it out right now, thinking Walker is the more fatigued fighter. What do you think, Steve? Well, I, I think that eighth round was key, Nick, and I think Walker won it with the body punching. Garcia had the momentum. Walker stretches the lead on my part just a little bit. So that could be crucial. Walker is in black, or in, in the, uh, he's the tall guy. They're both in black and silver. Travis Walker with that nice left hand to the body, really set up by a short little right to the head. Walker's been 10, but not at this pace. And Garcia, far fewer fights. He's not been 10 at all. Uh, he's never been tested the way Walker has tested him. Garcia's never been down until today, but he was down and got up. Really hurt by that. Crushing left hook to the body, but he climbed up after rolling around the canvas. Big follow-up left hand from Garcia. So he's won the crowd here as he continues to come on, and it's all about his determination. That's what people want, Steve. You want to see heart. Of course you want to see ability. We talked about you want to see big, strong guys knocking people out, but you're never going to look at a guy and not want to see him if he's full of guts. You know, I said at the top next that the only way Garcia was going to win was by him punching. I take that back. I was wrong. Right now, it's effective punching by Garcia. He's not throwing a lot of shots, but when he does land that left hook, it's, it's flush and it's clean. I haven't seen enough of it this round, though. And I think Garcia's lost a lot of the momentum that he had in round six and seven. Well, I like what he's doing here because Walker is allowing it. Walker not stuffing the jab in his face enough. So... Garcia continues to move forward. And when you get free shots to load up inside, you're going to land a few. But now Walker's shortening up inside, trying to shoot those uppercuts home. But as Walker wants to work right now, Garcia doesn't. Well, Garcia with that little clubbing right hand, then runs into some shots from Walker. 
Garcia trying to floor me with Walker. Again, he doesn't have the bullets in the gun to do that uh, effectively. So again, he can only do it by throwing more shots, as you say. So it's a question of volume here. I tell you one thing, the difference in height. I mean, Garcia is wild with his head inside, but he can't bump Walker because he can't reach him. Steve, you know, you look at a guy with a 68-inch reach. And it's not a big punch, and you say he has no shot at winning, but he's in this fight. Well, he's in the fight, no doubt. Hey, 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 it's great. You drop the hand, and they still drop them. I keep telling you, but keep dropping them, okay? Right back where you got them from, man. All right? And keep the stick, keep the stick, touch them, keep touching them, keep touching them, okay? When you get in close, you gotta touch them. Yeah, take them back to the center ring. Walk, don't feel the ropes, okay? Take them back to the center ring, okay? Let's go, baby. Get that tight, Let's go, come on. You want it, man? Let's go, come on. Come on, let's go. Come on. Come on. Okay. You got it, I know you got it, baby. It's all water. Garcia will knock out Walker. How do you have it with a round to go, Steve? 87, 84, Walker. Let's go. 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 let us go 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 let us go
Very game effort from Garcia. Stranger things have happened. You can't really count them out necessarily. Point deduction in the tenth for punching low for Walker. Who won that round? I call that a 9 9 round. I, you know, this is the kind of fight where you can look at your card. I have a 96 93 Walker, and it's not hard to picture it being close. Go. Very gutty effort by that man. He never really hurt Walker, but he sure kept the heat on. Steve Walker comes in. They had moved him carefully, but a big win over Estrada. He couldn't stop him. Uh, how do you rate his performance here? We'll, 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 go to, we'll, we'll wait till we see it on the cards, but... Did you expect a little bit more? A guy like Garcia is going to make you look bad if you don't get rid of him. I thought Walker would get rid of him early with the body shot. He didn't. The fight went to the real estate, favored by Garcia. And let's take a look at it from the beginning. Nobody seemed to understand what happened there, but actually that was clearly a left hand to the body by Walker. And now Garcia topples. If that bell did ring, Walker very well could, could have scored a knockdown. Knock round five, Garcia starts landing the left hook. He had big rounds five and six. Look at these left hooks plus. Walker, lucky Garcia is not a puncher. Left hook after left hook. Walker never blocked any of them and didn't slip any of them either. That got Garcia back into the fight. And now here's the point deduction. Low left hand just below the waistband of Garcia. That came in round 10. Gino Rodriguez took a point from Walker. Will it matter? We'll find out momentarily. Hey, Weissman! Welcome to the big leagues, guys. This was a hard 10-round fight. You can see it on that man's face. This is round 10. Point deduction for this punch. Ah, a good portion of the left glove of Walker is below the waistband of Garcia. You, you can't see Garcia's belly button, which makes it harder to determine whether a punch is low or not, but I think that was low. I'll give Gino Rodriguez, the referee, the uh, benefit of the doubt there. As we wait for the verdict here, I want to tell you about a new exciting series coming up Sunday here on Showtime. A new king has been crowned. Critics are hailing the Tudors. It's a four-star series. The hottest Henry VIII ever. Who are you? I'm Berlin. Jonathan Reese Myers is sleek, cool, and seductive. I want a divorce. I don't think the English people would ever forgive him. The best series since The Sopranos, period. It's too late. Your wife won't let you go. A feast fit for a king. Too late. Don't miss The Tudors, Sunday at 10, with replays all week. Again, I have I have Walker winning this fight. Ninety, I have a 96-93 for Walker. I have. Let's go to Dan Cole for the official announcement. Ladies and gentlemen, our judges have reached a split decision. Judge Denny Nelson scores the fight 96-93 for Garcia.
Judge Carl Benson scores the fight 95-94, Walker. And Judge John Mariano scores about 95-93 for the winner and the new IBA Continental Heavyweight Champion, Travis Blakeslade Walker. Walker. Walker's obviously happy and I think relieved by your statement. <laughs> well, you know what? Walker beat Estrada by majority decision tonight. He wins by split decision. This is getting harder for Travis Walker, not easier. But what an experience for him to go 10 hard rounds against a guy that just wouldn't stop. Hey, man, he was... He was absolutely anxious about that. Especially, you know, the first out-of-the-box card you hear is, you've lost the fight on one judge's card. So it's a minor championship. It means a lot to Travis Walker, who's been moved pretty carefully, and now he's avenged both his amateur defeats, or the, the most prominent am amateur defeats, beating Jason Estrada on Showbox five months ago and here tonight taking down George Garcia in a split decision. Yeah, what you see here, Nick, is that the extra point Walker got in round two for scoring the knockdown was negated by the point he lost in round 10 for the low blow when Gino Rodriguez took a point away. That turned out to be a wash, but boy, was it, you know, there was no margin of error for Walker because he won this fight by one point on the deciding card. Well, you know, as we talk about this more, and you look at two guys who came in, unbeaten, Walker clearly the favorite, we thought, going in. No reason to think he was more experienced. We'd seen him on Showbox. He was very good against Jason Estrada. He vowed that he would do things differently. Let's talk about the loser first with Garcia and all his limitation. Where's he going? Well, you know, he's a perfect example of why you got to look inside a fighter to see what kind of...